Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of my channel and we are going to be talking about how to create different streams of income, basically how to make money while in college. And here with me, Darius Livingston, fifth year senior football player in Houston Davis. Former, I guess, do I say former teammate of mine or are you still a teammate? Former teammate. Former you teammate. Onward and upward, so okay. Former. former teammate, current best friend, lifetime best friend, not current soulmate. Okay. And we are going to be talking about creating these different streams of income for you. We've both kind of taken different approaches, yet during our time in college, we have both been able to provide for ourselves and, and create an income uh, in, in different ways. So, so let's just start with the why. Why? It, what's one reason why you wanted to create this stream of income while in college? To alleviate stress, um, both for my mother um, and myself, just the stress of having to worry where the next bill is going to be paid or how the next bill is going to be paid or, you know, I don't want to eat top ramen every night and football, you know, go so far and covering meals. So um, just extending that and not living lavishly, right, but just be able to provide for myself in some sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I started making these different streams of income for a similar way. Like, right. I wanted to financially separate from my parents. I wanted to be able to not just, like, sit like eat ramen every night, like, be able to go out to dinner when I wanted. Right, right. Uh, be able to, you know, take my girlfriend on a date, which, like, right. I know you do, right? Like, take them shopping. Just be able to, like, enjoy normal life things and not have to force ourselves to live on this, like, stereotypical college budget. Right. Another reason why you want to create multiple streams of income, whether you're in college or, or really any time in your life, is because then you don't have to rely on just one thing. If all you do is work your nine to five, then you're extremely reliant on that job for your income. If a global pandemic happens or you lose your job or something happens or changes, then you're not out of luck because your one stream of income has dried up. So that's why we really diversified and, and tried to have these different forms of income and different streams of income. And another reason for that is then you can experiment. You can try different things. You can see what you like and what you don't like. You can test what you're good at and what you're not good at to create different streams of income. And then the final reason to create different streams of income is then you don't have to rely on one thing working. Like you don't need that one product or that one job or service, whatever it may be, that's going to make you a million dollars. You can have eight or nine or 10 different streams of income that are each making you a couple thousand and that can provide a living for you. And actually studies have shown that the average millionaire has seven streams of income, seven streams of income. So that in and of itself is a reason to create multiple streams of income. My first question would be, how is that possible with not having a lot of time? Because I'm sure that's what a lot of college students are going to feel. It's like I got books and class and studying and tests. We're both student athletes, so we had even less time. Can you tell me about like how you managed it with your time? Right, and I find this very common between a lot of people who are wanting to do something, but they find that time as a barrier mm -hmm. and to stepping forward into that. And I think it's just you gotta have to do it, right? You just have to try. If you don't try, you don't take that risk, you tell yourself you don't have time, so you don't do it. Well, you never really know until you do try. So you do try, you do put that time into you know that side income and which has a multitude and a plethora of different uh, methods and action you could choose from, but just actually doing it. And if you, you know, do it for one week, two weeks, three weeks, and you're like, you know, I actually don't have time, my academics are slipping up, or you know, I'm not prioritizing time correctly, then you could go ahead, okay, go back to the drawing board and see where you went wrong. But I feel like a lot of people hinder themselves from just taking the opportunity to make so much money because they think time is a barrier. Mm -hmm. Whereas myself, you know, I told myself that in a lot of different ways until I've actually done it. I was like, well, you know what? I was able to prioritize my time in a little bit of different aspects and I was able to do it. Mm -hmm. I think that like your your time needs to reflect your priority. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're like, oh, well, my priorities are, you know, getting straight A's or getting good grades, uh, passing my classes and uh, you know, volunteering and making this money, but yet you look at your time and you're like, well, I'm playing video games, I'm going to parties, something needs to change. And uh, hopefully what needs to change is how you're spending your time. So I think that those two things really, really should mirror each other. Can you tell us, like just list off what your different streams of income that you built while in college are? Okay, well, we, we got the money coming from Ball. Shout out FAFSA, shout out Ball. We got the money coming from my bounce house business. We got the money coming from my personal training business. We got the money coming from my jobs. And jobs I work are streaming, uh, ICA athletic, sport games, Burr Davis. 
Um, I also work as a bodyguard slash caterer slash bartender slash dishwasher. I'm very humble, never afraid to do the nitty gritty work for a venue called All Fellows in Davis, which is basically a rotary club. So I do a bunch of things for them. And I currently took a job at Walmart just to pass the time. You know, this summer has been prolonged and activity has been cut due to COVID. Just something to pass the time. I'm not taking any summer classes. So mm-hmm. just decided to add an extra stream of income. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more? I think a lot of that made sense. Can you tell us a little bit more about like the jumper business and what yeah, that is? For sure, for sure. So in high school, I actually worked for a jumper business for two years, my junior, senior year of high school every weekend just rented out inflatable bounce houses, water slide, tables, chairs, all of your basic party favors. And basically what I did when I went to college, I figured, hmm, let me buy a couple of units, right? That way, instead of working for nickels and dimes in high school, I could take majority profit, pay a couple of teammates, right? Fill up their pockets with some extra cash, uh, share the wealth, right? And keep majority for myself, um, which was something I did in college and it turned out pretty profitable. Mm-hmm. And I think for myself, some things that I did was I launched my first course my freshman year. And for that, I really just sat down and I said, what am I good at? Like, what are my unique skills? Um, and then what is there a market for? And at that time, it was like teaching people, teaching parents how to use Snapchat and keep their kids safe on Snapchat, which it was really popular at the time. I do one-on-one coaching. Affiliate marketing has really been big for me, like promoting other products and right, links. Right things like that, but also like we've done some stuff together. Like we did, we hosted a, a, a we emceed at a wedding. That was fun. Uh, some other streams of income that we created while we were in college that we didn't really mention in this video is one, reselling things. Um, it actually is a stream of income using apps like Mercari, Poshmark, Goat, OfferUp, Depop, things like that. We were able to resell for me a lot of old clothes, old tech gadgets, old camera gear, stuff like that. And Darius sold quite a bit of old clothes, old shoes. That's a really big market for sneakerheads, things like that. So reselling things was one of our streams of income. Another stream of income for us while in college uh, was guest speaking. So I know we said that we emceed a wedding, but I also did some guest speaking appearances related to my Instagram marketing and things like that. So I was actually able to travel, all expenses paid to Florida, to Texas, to Southern California, um, and, and speak at some different conferences and events. And then also you have to count as a stream of income, our stocks and investing. We both um, started our stock portfolios while in college and we are basically using the stock market and using our investments to set ourselves up for retirement one day. So there's just been like the more kind of hands that we've dipped our pot into, I feel like the more has come our way. Like the more we put out into the universe and prayed about those different resources and connected with people, the more they've also come, right? It's a right. cycle that kind of feeds itself. And I want to touch on something you actually say. You said, you looked at yourself and said, okay, what am I good at? And you could almost twist that and turn that to see, okay, what am I involved in? What are my resources? What are my niches, right? So you able to look at myself like the personal training and the party house favors, right? That's something like not your average typical student, right, would be able to get into, but everybody's so different and unique and so inclusive in so many different ways. You looked at just being able to take advantage of your experiences, which you've been able, like you said, putting your foot in that door, hands in different pots, just able to turn that around in your favor. So it doesn't matter who you are, right, your experiences and the people you've met, your resources are different from everybody else mm-hmm. and the campus, right? So why not utilize those and turn it and flip it for your favor? What do you think was the um, biggest benefit of going to college in terms of like from a business side? Networking, for sure. Uh, meeting new people, you can't, there are very few people who can do it by themselves. Very, very few. You look at the most successful CEOs and top business owners, they knew people. And you, the cliche is usually, it's not what you know, it's who you know, uh, what hands you can shake, what foot, what door you can put your foot in. Mm-hmm. So. I think when I first got started out, it was all about like, I'm just gonna hit the ground running. And I first started my business when I had like a week left before we got our first fall camp. And I was like, I have six, seven days to get this done and get it released. So I was on a real deadline. That was how I like picked what to start. And I also had some really great mentors who helped me pick where to start. But like for a college student listening, someone going from high school to college, and they're like, okay, this all sounds great, but where do I start? What would you say to that person? Start. Start, and, and it's something you've been preaching to your audiences, right? And something that you've often appealed to, um, kind of uh, alluding to my previous statement when I was saying, you know, what hinders a lot of people's time, what 
a lot of things that hinder the also hinders people is the failure, right? The okay, if I don't do this, if I don't succeed, then what? But that kind of leads to a quote that you often say, in which I love. You want to go ahead and bring that up? She, we say she or he or right. they, whatever pronoun you want. She who starts and fails will always be ahead of she who fails to start. Right. So that's the kind of mentality that we take with a lot of things in life, like not just in business and creating streams of income, is like, just get going, like just get started, put your head down and work, and then you can look up and, hey, maybe it's not the right thing for you. Maybe it's not what you're gonna be doing long term, uh, but at least you got started, at least you, you made a couple hundred bucks, or at least you just learned this new skill. I think, see if you agree with this, I think that a lot of the college students listening are going to have like their social media following. So I'm just thinking like if I am someone entering college or in college right now, that maybe the easiest way for me to start making an income is to use that following that I already have on social media in some way. And I know you've done this a little bit with like a couple of your different re like revenue streams, but definitely with like Body by D, which right. is personal training that he, he trains other college students. Also, I know you've promoted like your, your bounce houses, your jumpers right, on right. social media. Um, so I would assume that as a college student, uh, student athlete, whatever it may be, the easiest way to get started um, and to like you know launch a thing or pick pick whatever your first thing is and get customers is to use your social media and whether that's to do some kind of coaching, some kind of personal training or tutoring or hey you know maybe you're going to help other college students learn to organize their desks right. or to create right. habits around doing homework. But I would think that using the following you already have and pairing that with like, hey, here's what I'm kind of good at. Like my friends always go to me for advice for X, Y, and Z. Like yep. I know that like your friends are always going to you for like mindset stuff right. and like right. how are you positive and how do you keep this focus? And now you've started doing your own kind of exact coaching along these exactly. lines and using your social media to promote. Exactly. And I think it all kind of falls on the foundation of marketing, which I wasn't entirely great at, right? Using like figuring out how to uh, approach or, you know, kind of twist or angle whatever uh, service or uh, product, you know, I wanted to market and reach as many people as I, you know, as many people to help serve them as possible. And something how to be a student of. And I think it's never a bad skill or characteristic to always be a student, no matter how high you are, how low you are, wherever you are on the social ladder, right? Always be a student of the game, always itching to learn and grow mentally, physically, spiritually. I think it's just a super beneficial uh, skill that you have. I think it's also super beneficial to take the position of being a helper yep. or server, yep. which comes a little bit easier to us because we're both we're both Enneagram twos. He's a two wing three, I'm a two wing one. So naturally we love helping people and making sure they're taken care of. But um, any any last words for, for the college student looking to make a new stream of income or really anyone who's watching who just wants to make more money in a diverse way? Don't be intimidated. Right, don't be afraid to take that leap of faith um, as long as you put in the work, right? Um, even, you know, we have to put work behind our prayer and us being spiritual guys, um, just having that service uh, or that servanthood, right? Being first, putting people first, I think it's just always important to not be afraid to work in and not just sit and hope and wait, but taking that step forward, you know, taking that leap of faith and just keep being prepared to put in the work behind it. Let us know what you thought about this video if you've created your own stream of income. If you're in college and watching this, we would really just love to hear from you in the comments. Right. Like what college you go to, uh, where are you from? We would just love to kind of start connecting with some more some more followers who are our age. But Absolutely. Darius, thanks for being here today. And you. thank you for watching. Go Wags! Right here is a link to our previous YouTube video that I did with my girlfriend, Taylor, on our top 10 reasons why we wanted to move to Seattle. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video right here. Please hit the bell and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate you. I'll see you next time.